So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video. And we just came from watching the annual Liars Luncheon. It was the Ravens, their pre-draft presser, uh, because we, of course, got the draft coming up in about a week and a half. Wow, it's almost, it's almost here. Thank goodness that it's almost here so we can finally get all the speculation out the way and get to the actual what's going down. But anyway, it was Eric DaCosta, it was John Harbaugh, and it was Joe Hortiz, and they all answer questions from the media about different things. Now, of course, you know... There's a lot of smoke screens that happen uh, in these pre-draft presses. Uh, this is just where the Ravens can continue putting stuff out there so people can take it and interpret it in their own way while the Ravens have their own plan in mind. But anyway, let's get into some of the things that were asked about. From Jump, Jamison Hensley, he was bringing fire questions all press along. So shout out to Jamison Hensley because he wasn't holding back or nothing. Anyway... Uh, hit the first question that he asked from jump off top from rip. He said, what, uh, he asked Eric DeCosta and him about the possible Orlando Brown Jr. trade. Like, what's the status on that? What's going on with it? And then he also asked in the same question, he asked about the Alejandro Villanueva visit. He asked about both of those in the same question on the first question. And Eric DeCosta was just like, oh, no, I ain't commenting on that. Ain't nobody say nothing on that. But one thing that he did say that was very interesting even though we kind of sort of knew that already, because we all we all know about them Raven smoke screens, because they sure love throwing them out there. But I had never heard anybody actually admit to it. Eric DaCosta said that sometimes they bring in players that they don't even uh, intend on signing. And sometimes they'll bring in these players just to sort of try to get their name out there. So maybe somebody else can sign them and also as a distraction to what they're really doing. And I appreciated that. I appreciated that. I know that um, I know that we're not going to, we shouldn't expect Eric DaCosta and Harbaugh and them, we shouldn't expect them to tell exactly what they're going to do. We don't expect that at all, any of the presses. But um, I did appreciate them sharing that, that gym uh, with us. Uh, he talked about Lamar Jackson when they had him in uh, prior to the draft, when he was drafted. Um, and they said that it worked out him not having an agent because he said the agents, they're the ones that they put a lot of stuff out there. And Eric DaCosta said he likes keeping as many uh, secrets as possible. Anyway, um, next, uh, which was a good question, too, <clears throat> even though it is still kind of early and it's before the draft, so, uh, but it's still a good question. Uh, somebody asked if they feel like they are a better team now uh, than when the season actually ended. Uh, and Eric DaCosta said that there's still a lot of work to be done, which we know. Again, that's a hard question to answer because there's the draft we're still in the like the second, third wave of free agency and whatnot. So, but he did say that um, they weren't in this business to be complacent, and I know a lot of frustrated Ravens fans tend to use that word when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens and their lack of making moves. But Eric DeCosta said that there are still some unrestricted free agents. There's some trade opportunities, and there, of course, are the post June first cuts to be made as well. And that was a pretty general answer. Uh, didn't get into any specifics of anything, but we again, we didn't expect them to. Next, oh, this one was funny. Joe Hortiz, who was the director of uh, player personnel, uh, they asked him about Rashad Bateman and Terrace Marshall Jr. Because um, I forgot who asked the question, but they were like, these two receivers, they have been linked to you guys for the longest. What do you guys think about those two? And Joe Ortiz, he said they uh they both they, he said they had their eye on both of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> when he said that, I was like, they not drafting either one of them. As soon as he said that, I'm like, okay, anybody looking for Rashad Bateman or Terrence Marshall Jr. out the window because they ain't coming to the Ravens. Uh, but he talked about how they both are versatile; they could both play inside and outside and whatnot. So I I, I thought that part was funny. Um, but it did lower my expectations of expecting either one of them to be a Baltimore Raven uh, this upcoming season. Now, with the draft, um, you know, Ravens, they love them picks. They, they, they love their picks. And somebody asked about uh, all the picks that they get and, and how they uh, somebody somebody ranked the Ravens as one of the best drafting teams. Uh, Eric DeCosta said the draft is a luck-driven dr luck process. So he said it's not even really about skill. I mean, which we know it actually is because you got to scout guys and you got to make sure they're fit for your skin. Blah, blah, blah. But he said it's a luck-driven process um, because you just you never know. You never know. This guy could be the biggest standout in college, and we've seen it happen plenty of times. This guy could be killing it in college and get to the NFL, and it just it never transfers over. Uh, but he did say the more picks you have, the more likely it is that you hit on players. 
which is true. So the, the, the more shots you take, the more chances you got at making it. Um, and he said that they have had a lot of both hits and misses, which we definitely know about. Um, and said the success comes from having the most picks. Because, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> they love them draft picks. Uh, moving on. Um, Bradley Bozeman. They were asked about Bradley Bozeman, what he's looking to contribute to this offense. And John Harbaugh said that Bradley Bozeman is actually in a conversation for starting at either guard or center. Um, so what I took that as is that he is actually not in the conversation for starting at center and that the Ravens are going to be drafting a center or signing somebody, but most likely drafting one. I think Bradley Bozeman stays at left guard. Um, cause when, when you start throwing around, oh, he's in a conversation to start for us at either guard or center, but then you look at the history again, no. So yeah, expect them to get a new center. Uh, or unless they roll with Pat McCarry, which I don't expect them to, uh, or they give the shot to Tristan Colon Castillo. So we got to just wait and see. Um, they were asked about Lamar Jackson's contract. Cause you know, that's been a subject for a long time. Uh, and EDC said that they have continued the conversation of Lamar Jackson's contract. And now he said if they do sign Lamar Jackson to a deal, it's going to change the way that they operate um, over those years. And he said it'll change the way that they do contracts and said uh, they would have to be a little more careful and they were probably going to lose uh, some good young players. And well, that's something that we all know. We all know that um, it, it, once Lamar Jackson gets signed to his big deal, you're not going to be able to keep everybody. But, and this is why even more now, why we keep saying the Ravens need to go all in on offense. All in. All in. Because you're getting ready to pay Lamar Jackson, whatever you're getting ready to pay him. So that's going to somewhat restrict you. Now, it doesn't make you like, if you pay Lamar Jackson, if you pay your quarterback, it doesn't mean, oh my goodness, we, we can't sign anybody else at all. It doesn't mean that at all. We, we keep seeing it year after year after year. Even this year, it's teams that have their quarterbacks signed to these big deals that are still continuing to make moves, still continuing to just really try to build the best team that they can possibly build and try to get significant players too. It's teams that are still doing it. Shout out to the Chiefs. So it's not a, it, just because you sign your quarterback, it does not make things impossible. So I, I don't, I just don't want people to, it changes things for sure. And like you said, it's going to change the way that they do some contracts and whatnot. It's going to change some things. But before we get to that point where they re-sign Lamar Jackson to his contract, let's really put the best possible team around him and most weapons around him. Give this man, a, we talked about it in the stream last night. Lamar Jackson has spoiled us, spoiled us like crazy. Let's spoil him. Let's spoil him. And um, now, speaking of spoiling him, Jamison Hensley again. <laughs> I told y'all, Jamison Hensley, he was bringing it. He was bringing it from start to Every time you heard Jamison Hensley's name and you heard his voice, it's like, oh, 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 oh yeah, he about to say some fire. So Jamison Hensley asked about the Ravens' problems with drafting wide receivers. And that's something that gets talked about all the time, man. All the time. Why do Ravens just continue to miss for the most part, when it comes to wide receivers, there's just this lack of consistency when it comes to the wide receiver position. So EDC said he's aware that there's some fan discontent with the wide receiver position. So EDC listening to them streets and he's hearing what people are saying. He's hearing it. Um, but he said that uh, it's actually insulting when people say that the Ravens don't have wide receivers, he said it's insulting to us as a front office. It's insulting to those wide receivers. Um, and he said that they've been winning games and they see how they've been winning games. Uh, so he, appre he appreciates that. And that's the most important part to him, which it is. It certainly is. Um, but we know that, that, that the wide receiver is just it's been a mix of things, man. It's been a mix of things. Um, biggest thing for me. Uh, like we've talked about a lot on here, I think one of the biggest things with the Ravens, it's like a gift and a curse because since they've been in win now mode just so much over time, they have always been in win now mode like for a very long time, definitely since 2008. Um, and even two years, I think in 2006, they went win now mode. What 2007? No, but 2008, ever since then, they've been in win now mode every single year. So 
they'll draft some guys here and there, but they won't take the time to develop them. Torrey Smith, Torrey Smith made it out. He better be glad he made it out a lot because he wasn't even supposed to be what he was. What he was because he was a second round pick, yeah. But the Ravens brought in Lee Evans. Lee Evans was supposed to be Torrey Smith, but Lee Evans got hurt, so they were like, "Oh, well, Torrey Smith, okay, you're up." And in preseason, oh my goodness, he looked like a big yikes. Oh, it looked like a big yikes. Torrey Smith was dropping these easy passes and whatnot, but obviously he went on to be very successful with the Baltimore Ravens and had great chemistry with Joe Flacco, and it was a beautiful thing. Um, so, but again, he wasn't even supposed to be it, but due to injury, he got put in. But Ravens, since they've been in win now mode so much, they bring in veterans at the wide receiver position. They would bring in older guys, and they just wouldn't take the time to develop their own. Now, under EDC, it's been a bit different. But now, uh, with the, the current offense, it, it's, there's a lack of involvement with the wide receivers, with different wide receivers. Hollywood, he's definitely involved. We already know that. Andrews, I mean, he's a tight end, but he's involved. But as far as the other wide receivers, there's a lack of involvement. And th this is why, and I know some people will be like, hey, well, if the Ravens, if they make a move for a wide receiver, it could be the best wide receiver in the league. It won't matter. It won't change anything. Actually, I think it would. I think it would. Because with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, um, that and, and again, a lot of people also talk about, oh, Lamar Jackson, he can't throw outside the numbers, man. He can't do it. So with that, I say, who is he throwing outside the numbers to? Who, who is Because he has the, the size of his receivers. It does matter. It matters. Because all of it, most of his receivers, they like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, they, they all low to the ground guys. And that's no offense. I'm 5'10 I'm myself. I'm low to the ground, but I'm more built like a like a like a Gus Edwards or, or like a Patrick Ricard. I'm like a mix of them too. But anyway, we talking about them, not me. The receivers, it's, it's almost like the Ravens have a lot of slot receivers. But who is that outside guy? Who's that go up and get it outside guy? That aggressive outside guy for Lamar Jackson to throw it to. Now we know Hollywood plays on the outside, but they can move him around. But who's that bigger frame guy that both is big and plays big? So think about it. This is why I want the Ravens to go get that guy. Anyway, um, so, and Eric DaCosta also said uh, Lamar Jackson likes their wide receivers too. So Eric DaCosta said, hey, y'all not going to be insulting me. It's insulting when y'all feel like we ain't got no wide receivers. So I, I, I liked how he did that because Eric DaCosta got a little petty with it. Because he said, I like our receivers. So it's insulting to me when y'all say we don't have any. It's insulting to them when you say that we don't have any. And then he said, I like our guys. And Lamar Jackson does as well. So he threw that on people who will be riding with Lamar Jackson. Any Lamar Jackson fans, he was like, oh, Lamar Jackson likes our wide receivers. What you going to say now? What you going to say now? That's what I think he was doing with that one. Anyway. Um, and then they asked uh, what type of wide receivers that the Ravens typically look for. They asked Eric DaCosta this question. Now, this was about maybe like 10, 15 minutes later. But Eric DaCosta was like, oh, John Harbaugh, you can answer that one. And John Harbaugh was like, he said he'll stand by his guys and that uh, they're going to show people what they are all about. So it reminded me of um, it was a much different tune uh, than the presser from a few months ago when John Harbaugh was like, we ain't begging for no wide receiver. You think we about to beg for we ain't begging for no wide receiver? We ain't doing that. It's a much different tune than uh than that one, but um he was just rocking with his guys, man, and that's what you expect him to do. You you wouldn't expect a a head coach, a GM, a, a player, a, a, a director, of pro personnel, a player personnel, whatever the title is. My apologies, I forgot. But you wouldn't expect those guys to be at a presser, a pre-draft presser, and be like, oh no, we don't like these wide receivers, we don't like this position, we don't like that position. No, well, you wouldn't expect them to do that. Of course, they're gonna stand in front of everybody and ride with their boys, man. Of course. So that's no shock or surprise or anything. But again, actions speak much louder than any words can. Action, so watch what the Ravens do. Watch what they do. Uh, watch how they move. Watch the draft. Watch the remainder of free agency. Just watch them. Uh, because that will tell the real story. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.